talk about um, using uh, Next.js uh, as a program for uh, websites built to Next.js um, Next is, the, is a framework built on React. Uh, but first, but where I'm from, I'm uh, Lucas, a software developer from uh, Fabric. Uh, this is our office in Amsterdam. And we mainly build websites in the uh, museum sector and sector like that. And we uh, focus heavily on front end design. Um, so a lot of our developers are front end developers. Um, yes, so uh, I really like uh, the idea of having a CMS uh, for um, building websites um, because uh, for years. We struggle uh, a lot with uh, the possibilities of the Django template language, and um, for our front end, we have to learn those. And um, at the same time, there's a lot of improvements in the uh, JavaScript sector where frameworks are more common, and uh, people uh, have more and more experience with frameworks and less experience with plain HTML and uh, JavaScript. So I think uh, it's nice if the Atlas option for Wagtail uh, will be developed very well and uh, easy to use with frameworks. Uh, it's also great for um, separating the back end and front end logic uh, so we could more easily have uh, well, um, multiple apps that use the same API and the same CMS and uh, the back end. Uh, and um, you can also more easily decouple stuff. Um, you could have a new design for it and still keep the same API. I think this is at the moment a major struggle often. Um, so yeah, I think Headless is nice. Um, I also like Next.js. Yes. Uh, it's a relatively new framework built on React, and it solves a lot of the problems why we didn't want to use frameworks, uh, mainly uh, support for uh, search engine optimization. Uh, and um, uh, well, uh, images and a lot of stuff is just out of the box in Next.js and they have a nice active community uh, so I hope that stays away I think uh, it's nice to try to build websites with that uh, also it's built on React um, of course you, everyone has their favorite framework uh, but I think React uh, is already developed for many years and uh, there's a lot of stuff available so it's way easier to find solutions for common problems in React often for developers than it is in uh, well, in the JavaScript, it's pretty hard often, and uh, well, in more uh, obscure frameworks like Svelte, it seems really nice. Uh, I'm still worried that it's too new for not sure how much it will stay. So I think this is a, a nice one. Um, yeah, so how can we combine Webtail and Next.js in a nice way? I've been uh, looking how to uh, work on that and uh, how we can uh, easily integrate it and make it uh, logic and easy for everyone to build websites with it. Um, yeah, there is already uh, existing work on this. Uh, there's a repository called Webtail Pivot, which is by a Swedish company, I think it's called Freud. Um, they did very nice work on building a cookie cutter product with uh, Webtail and Next.js. Yes. Um, I like a lot what they've been doing, and they have been solving a lot of common problems like. Uh, Review modes and uh, and public protected spaces and stuff like that. Uh, but they also are very opinionated, in my opinion. Um, you have to use the, their cookie cutter is very uh, custom. It doesn't use the Vectel API mostly. It just uses the REST framework API, and uh, it has integration with a lot of stuff and storybook, which I really like. But for me, it feels also that you don't really have your own choices anymore because you have to do it that way. So I was looking a bit further, like how can we make it more general? Uh, then I noticed that uh, uh, Webtail also has is was uh, operating with Next.js. Yes. Uh, Webtail currently has a project called R and Hash yet, where they are doing also some research on Next.js, yes, which is really nice, and they keep track of uh, what, how far they are. Um, so I was surprised that uh, Webtail themselves are also interested in Next.js Next, yes, and happy. So then I arrived at the Webtail space and wanted to improve on the Next.js um, stuff. And I noticed that a lot of people from 
Web Silk and yeah, other companies are yeah. also interested in Next.js. This is stuff great. Um, so what I wanted to do to uh, show better how to integrate uh, Web Silk and Next.js is uh, use the next uh, the Web Silk Bakery demo uh, to turn it into a uh, project spread with uh, Web Silk and Next.js together. So that Bakery demo uh, the Bakery demo is a uh, a Vectil demo site for uh, new developers to um, learn to work with Vectil uh, and see what the possibilities of the CMS are. So it's a repository you can check out and, uh, and then you can play around with Vectil. Um, I think it's nice to turn it into uh, a project where it uses Next.js as a front end and uh, you can learn how to uh, how you can solve uh, the problems uh, with Next yes, and you can also talk about it and see how it can be done even better. And uh, maybe you can make uh, a Vectel helper package to uh, better integrate Next yes later. So I want to talk about uh, how I solved some stuff for the Vectel bakery sites and uh, some common topics that are occurring when you have uh, when you try to make a headless uh, CMS uh, front end, uh, like routing to pages and different templates and how can make stream fields render correctly and risk text is pretty hard. Images are interesting and uh, well, then you have the more advanced admin features. Uh, and then you have caching and forms. Caching mainly because the front end framework also offers uh, an XGS uh, the option to serve the server side rendering. Uh, that's the incremental step generation, which I really like. And then the, the page is generated on the website, that's the, uh, sorry, on the server, the static generation. And uh, upon next request, you only have to download static HTML uh, and it will be really fast. Uh, then there's incremental static generation, that means that the pages are not necessarily generated on the server, but they are generated on the server when the user first requests them. So I think this is very useful for Vectil because people will make new, uh, new pages all the time. And, uh, you don't necessarily want to immediately generate everything all the time. So this is a feature I really like. Uh, Server-side rendering on the other hand uh, just means that every request by any, any client in the browser, it will uh, do a request to Next.js and to Vectil. Um, so you can more customly build uh, the page so it has less issues with caching. Step generation has issues with caching because, uh, well, when you change something, uh, you cannot use the static generated HTML again. So then we also need solutions for that. All right, so the typical Next.js is, is that Next.js is a server, uh, so the original server and on the client. And the client just requests a page from Next.js, and Next.js says like, oh, I have a Dynamic Cast, so I can just send it to you. Or Next.js thinks I don't have Dynamic Cast, and I need to build it, and then I need Vectel to help me build a page. Uh, and then you can serve it to the client. And uh, the client can, from then on, also uh, call the Vectel API to further build the page and get more out of it. Um, yes, so I want to show some coding. All right, so here we have the Vectel Bakery demo CMS with the Vectel 3.0 in the new colors. Uh, yeah, so oh, this is the Vectel API. And here we have the Bakery demo. Uh, this is already running on Next.js. Yes. Uh, I don't have every component of it. Uh, I'm just going gradually over it. Um, uh, yeah, so the first topic I want to talk about is routing. So uh, when you go somewhere, uh, you would like uh, this, this is the routing the URLs. So you want them to, to be able to manage them. Uh, and Next.js yes provides routing options. Uh, they are directly called pages, and you can build your own routes here. You, uh, here, uh, index is just a common name, but any name you put here as a file is like a URL segment that you can use uh, as a page. <laughs> then it also has variable pages. So in this case, uh, I just grab the whole path as an array. That's an option for Next.js, yes. and uh, this will be a catch all that will just um, find any page that uh, a user requests. Uh, what I'm actually doing then is I call the Vectel API uh, endpoints and it will give me, uh, I can send an HTML URL to it and then it will give me the, I redirect URL to the page that is uh, connected to that 
uh, euro, and then I can uh, get the base data from that. Actually, this function is doing that. Uh, so that's that allows me to uh, get the vector API JSON for any base that I uh, that is requested by the user, and I think that's the best way to solve. Uh, um, routing for now because from Vector you, you can do any routing you like, you can create any page you like. And next year we'll just ask Vector uh, which page uh, is actually uh, needed. And then uh, you can render it. Um, yeah, so what happens when a page arrives? Uh, we basically get the page data from Vector. Um, currently I say we validate every 12 hours well based on uh, how, how much you like to guess, and I think it's mostly should be less. Um, and then I just render a base component, uh, which will uh, be like the base HTML from vector templates, like the, the basic uh, base. So next year, open an option to create a head uh, element, which will fill the head for a certain URL. So this is very useful for uh, social OT text and uh, search engine optimization, because uh, any page can have a different URL, a different uh, text. And you can also uh, add components to it uh, in different uh, in different components. You can add stuff to it by just using this head wrapper. And next year, we'll gather everything together and put it in the head. Um, yeah, so currently, I render here the basic structure of the vector page, which is uh, a menu bar, uh, breadcrumbs, obviously, and uh, a template. So, uh, um, yeah, of course you have different templates because uh, in Vector you have the base models. So every base model can have a different template. Uh, so we can solve that by uh, mapping the templates from uh, Vector to templates from React. So here I say uh, if I have a home page, I want to render the home page templates. And if I have a bread page, I want to render the bread page templates, and etc. Um, the nice part is also that this dynamic allows uh, the code only to be loaded when it's necessary, so your JavaScript code that needs to be downloaded is smaller. Um, yeah, so then we would load, for example, the homepage in this case. Uh, and then it will render, basically, I copied the Vectil homepage templates uh, and rewrote it to React, which is kind of the same as HTML for the most part. And I think the React looks pretty clean and nice. Uh, yeah, so what I noticed, what I didn't know when working with a web API, it's actually already quite uh, powerful. Uh, you can query the fields you like uh, in a moment, uh, and you can query lists of stuff, and you can, um, a lot of it is already inside. So actually, I had less problems making uh, web Nexus components than I uh, assumed. Uh, but I do think it would be nice uh, if we have problems that we can see if the web API needs to be improved at, for some points. Uh, yeah, so that's nice to research. So for example, for in this space, the bread space. Uh, ah, sorry. So here we have a selection of breads and we have designation. So in the React component, I can actually just call the web API and say, hey, I want uh, six breads and in alphabetical order or whatever order I want. Uh, and then when I go to the next page, uh, I can query a different selection uh, of uh, things. So it's a, well, it's dynamic loading uh, that works pretty fast and well, I think. So how can we run the stream fields? Uh, in the admin, multiple stream fields can be defined and uh, each has their own rendering. Um, but the nice thing is that Vector API already uh, supports uh, nest, nested field, stream fields to API. Uh, I can also show by the way the JSON is for this page. And this is an example of a complex query you can do. You can just uh, basically uh, put a query of stuff you want, and you can specify which fields you want, and then you get like the really custom. Uh, Fields, for example, I think it's called body. Uh, yeah, 
So let me get the paragraph of uh, a series of type that you might need. Uh, and we read next year, we can also render this by, uh, for, for example, on uh, I can make a mapping from blocks, just like the templates, to uh, templates that will be rendered for the block, and then I can actually loop all the series and just render these blocks. Uh, for that, I also made a component vector stream that I was like, yes, a block mapping, and then I just uh, render it. Uh, so then I get this uh, risk test. Uh, yeah, so risk text is also pretty hard because uh, Vectel, by default, it will uh, create references in risk text uh, outputs. Uh, so I think that's something that could be improved in the API. And I think someone was working also on it in, uh, in this, in this uh, sprint, so it's super nice. Uh, that uh, the page URLs are actually uh, URLs and not uh, links to pages because that's hard to. Uh, to find the correct place for it in Wagtail or in uh, XGS. So what I'm basically using to convert the, the risk text is uh, a utility uh, where I found this package that rewrites HTML to React and I can uh, turn elements into uh, Next.js elements. For example, the anchor element, Next.js likes the has a link component, uh, which uh, does, which recognize that the link is uh, an, an internal link on the website, and then it can already prefetch uh, links on the page that you are on. So loading will be a lot faster. So it's really nice to make use of that to uh, go around the website because it will feel very fast and not flashy. So uh, I process each red text element uh, with this uh, function to turn it into uh, React, actually, and then I can manipulate it. So it's pretty useful for me. Uh, yeah, then images uh, are always hard to respond to images, uh, but Next.js has a nice image component that uh, actually maps pretty well to the Vector API output. So uh, in the end, for simple images, I only need um, I can almost directly map them to uh, do an XGS image. Here I'm actually doing an experience, experiment with uh, optimizing the, the width and height. But basically, I can just render next image uh, over the source, depending on how your server settings are, uh, to, the, to the correct SVG URL. And I can just map the width and height of the image to it, uh, and it will work pretty well. Uh, Next year supports multiple layouts. So here I run an image and I say the fill layout and then it will fill a whole container, just like an original. And otherwise you can also use the, the regular layouts and you have some similar some different layouts based on what you exactly need for images because you have different use cases. Uh, so what I also do for rendering images uh, on the back end, I um, I use API fields from Backfill. Um, Um, yeah, so basically, my pages, uh, I need to expose the data from the page to the API. So I have API fields for that, uh, and then you can put data fields and model fields from your API. You can expose them, and also you will need some uh, uh, some customization on it, so then you can use ser serializes their uh, REST framework concepts uh, that allows you to uh, customize the output of certain fields. Um, so, example, for images, I use a rendition fields. Uh, because I like to keep the Wagtail focus points functionality uh, and that's currently in Wagtail. Um, so I first make a basic uh, cutout from the image and then I let uh, Next.js uh, handle the image. Uh, Next.js built-in image uh, handler is already pretty good. It uses the sharp JavaScript library um, and uh, it's pretty good at resizing and rescaling. So, uh, this will work pretty fast in my opinion, uh, in my experience. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, there are also more advanced options. If you really want faster images, then there's support for external loaders. Uh, so that these are external services that can crop and use your images uh, and serve your images really fast. I think they are very interesting to explore, but 
then you also have to find out how to combine it with the Wagtail or focus points functionality because you would like to keep the CMS behavior from what you expect to get and what the image will give you. Um, uh, yeah, then <laughs> caching is always an issue, so the server size rendering is by far the easiest option. Uh, for simple sites, I think it's nice um, to use the static generation for really fast sites. Uh, and actually, I wrote a simple um, backend for the Webtail frontend cache. Um, uh, that will, uh, since recently, Next.js has support with uh, its own API, uh, which allows you to uh, invalidate uh, static generated pages. So uh, with a vector frontend cache, I can see if someone saves a vector page, and then the vector frontend cache will call uh, the Next.js API actually and uh, uh, request the page to be purged. And then uh, I can use, uh, well, I can have cached static pages, and on save, I can have them refreshed, which is really nice. Uh, well, for many changes, it's harder, of course. So therefore, I think it's nice to at least refresh your whole uh, next pages every 10 minutes or whatever. Um, yeah, that's my presentation. Uh, Review modes, I made like a hacky version of view modes that will work for uh, uh, draft pages and also it's protected with a password. Um, but I noticed now that Webtail has their own headless preview packets, which I think is way better and uh, supports everything. So I still need to see how I can integrate it with that's great. Uh, then the admin user bar is also a very nice feature for users. I think uh, it shows the uh, People at Torchbox call it the edit bird. It's the bird in the bottom right that allows you to uh, edit the current page. Uh, I think it's really useful for admin users, uh, but it can of course not be cast on a static page. So on every page, I do an extra call to the backend to see if the user is logged in, and if so, I just render the static HTML from the template tag and put it here, and it works. So it's nice. Um, That's for that. And uh, well, forms are actually pretty hard. I thought I'll solve forms also, but um, they still need some more support from the Vector API, possibly. But I also have to research it, and I think also someone from Overcast was doing some work on it, which is nice. So I hope actually to make progress on this soon and be able to integrate forms uh, also easily. But it's not uh, very easy at the moment. Okay, well. So to summarize, uh, I think the Wacko API is already pretty good, and it needs some minor tweaks to, uh, for a little bit better support, like uh, maybe basic, basic uh, rendition field support for stream field blocks, and uh, rich text conversion for stream field blocks, stuff like that. Uh, I think it would be nice if we could have, at some point, like a Wacko package for Next.js or a Wacko package, so that uh, it will be even more even easier to uh, uh, use Next.js and have the, the great, uh, uh, have an easy integration. Um, yeah, so each topic has actually multiple ways of handling them. Said, I really like our Next.js that it's so open that you can uh, still investigate more of this depending on what you need. And also with Vector is nice. So uh, yeah, stuff I would like to do further research on now is the form support and router pages. It's also it's related to form support in a way. Uh, internationalization, but, uh, next year it has internationalization and Vector has internationalization, but I haven't, um, they work together, but I haven't done it very thoroughly. So I might turn into problems, and also someone from Vector's face was having some problems with it. So there's some stuff to fix there. Uh, and then the advanced admin features, I think uh, the Pipit Vector package solves some of those, so they are very interesting to do that. Uh, 
uh, and also a wax sold some of those within a head of the group package. So uh, there's, a, there's a project being made. Uh, that's nice. And then there's guessing. I'm not sure. Uh, I think uh, we'll see later about how it's, I think it's basically very custom what you need for guessing. Uh, so that's what I wanted to share. So thanks. <laughs> Uh, the Wagtail API is basically a REST framework. Uh, so it's not. built on the REST framework and it basically uses all the pieces from REST framework. Um, so but, but the data format is not inherent to the standard. Uh, so it's not JSON API, for example. It's a JSON API, right? Uh, JSON API defines relationships and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Parameters you can, can add in the URL, and so that's, that you can use another framework than NetJS to to talk to the uh, to the API without needing to to write a, a new intuition layer. Ah, that sounds interesting uh, to uh, yeah compare. I don't know for exactly, but nice.